Welcome to TRS Clips. Just know we've built this channel so that you binge watch the entire podcast through the highlights of different episodes. Like this video, but first enjoy it. Let's uh, get to the Big Bang, sir. One, why did it happen? Two, what was there before the Big Bang? Three, how do we know that the Big Bang happened? Uh, why did the Big Bang happen? See, the best theory of the universe that we have is the Big Bang theory. You'll have to explain it as well. Yeah. So the Big Bang theory says that at time t equal to zero, at the very beginning of time, everything that is that exists within the universe, all the stars, all the galaxies, all the light, all the radiation, all the dark matter, all the dark energy, all of that was concentrated together in a single point. That's how the universe initially was. Then something made the universe expand. The space-time within the universe expand. It was not an explosion. It was not a bang. It was a, an expansion of the universe. How slow or fast was it? Uh, well, actually, the... When we physicists think of time, we think of it as if from a logarithmic perspective, you know, the logarithmic scale, yeah, yeah. exponential scale. So initially the expansion was incredibly fast. Yeah. Initially there was something called infl the inflationary epoch in which space-time expanded superluminally, which means that the expansion of space-time was faster than the speed of light. Mm. So you can go beyond the speed of light only in terms of the expansion of space-time itself. But when you're traveling within space-time, you cannot break the speed limit of light. What happens if you do? You simply can't. The laws of the universe prevent you from doing it. But theoretically... If you try to do that, your mass becomes infinite. Mm. There is something called... Uh, in, in relativity, the faster you go, the more massive you become. Mm. And if you want to reach the speed limit of the, the light speed, you have to have infinite mass. So it's it's unphysical. You can't have that, right? It's not possible. Like your atoms disperse. No. Then the the it's it's not a quantum theory. It's a macroscopic theory. So we don't talk about atoms and molecules in this. Let's say you have one gram of mass, and you're making it travel at uh, 100 kilometers per second. It's gonna be one gram. But if you start uh, pushing it to relativistic velocities, you're gonna have the, the mass is gonna increase from from a certain perspective, and. The faster it goes, the more massive that one gram piece of mass becomes. It may become a kilo, it may become a hundred kilos. And the closer you reach the speed to the speed of light, the more massive it is. And Some Something gets added to it. No. Then? It's just the mass only increases. The mass only, only And increases. that's a mystery. It, 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 it's not mystery. It, it's just the law, the, the, the equations of uh, special relativity. Okay. They tell us this happens. So after the universe started expanding, what happened? After the universe started expanding, first there was inflation, hmm. then the inflation ended, then there was an, then there was a period of expansion. Initially, the, the universe was very, very dense. In the very beginning, it was just pure energy. Hmm. Then, as the universe expanded, it cooled down, but it was still very hot. And then you had the first, atom, the, so the first uh, protons and electrons that formed. And you also had the sea of photons, which was going through that. And so what was there before? If if you said the first atoms formed? The first protons and neutrons initially. The first protons and neutrons formed. So what was there before the first protons and neutrons? Because your viewpoint of the universe is that everything is made up of protons, neutrons and electrons. That's 5% of the universe. Okay. Okay. That's what we're taught in our science textbooks. Yeah. So initially you had just pure energy, essentially. W what did it look like? No way to say. Just Just photons. Just light you can think of. But as it expanded, photons are light, but extremely energetic light in, in the very beginning. So it was not visible to human eyes. Of course, there were no humans at the time. Yeah. But if, if you were to place a human there, what would that human see? Nothing. Black. It was dark. Dark. But it actually was light, even in the darkness. That was extremely highly energetic light, way beyond the in, uh, ultra um, ultraviolet. Mm. So see, we see the spectrum of light, the, the rainbow, the lowest frequencies that you see are the red frequencies and the highest frequencies are the violet frequencies. There is a frequ frequency spectrum beyond the violet which is invisible to us. We can't see it. Then if you go even more energetic, it's X-rays and even more energetic than X-rays, you have gamma rays. Gamma rays are extremely dangerous because they are ionizing radiation. They will knock electrons out of your atoms in your body. They will break chemical bonds. They will mutate your DNA. That's why gamma radiation is extremely hazardous. So is X-ray radiation. So in the very early universe, when it was just energy, it was extremely highly energetic photons. 
a very highly energetic gamma rays essentially then the universe expanded it cooled a little bit as it cooled it it gave rise to matter and antimatter protons anti protons neutrons anti neutrons electrons anti uh, positrons that sort of thing but there was slightly more matter than antimatter so matter and antimatter when they meet they annihilate each other and give rise to pure energy again like but, an explosion yes an explosion of energy pure energy boom that sort of thing but there was slight for, for whatever reason there was slightly more matter than antimatter that's why when the universe expanded sufficiently we have more matter we don't encounter ant- antimatter anywhere but we can create that in particle accelerators so it is what happened at cern yes we can create antimatter in cern very minute quantities of that are created from time to time do we know how long back the big bang happened the big bang happened 13. Point, nearly 13.8 billion years ago okay. that's the best uh, calculation that we have how do we know that how do we know that is a very good question so when we observe the universe let's say we take snapshots of galaxies right far away galaxies we see that the further a galaxy is away from us the more red shifted it is now what is red shift we know the doppler effect when a train is coming towards us and it's uh, it's uh, putting out its siren the pitch is is shifted high it's highly shifted and the moment the train passes by you it, it goes low in the shift yeah mm. the, the the sound changes even though it's the same uh sound so that is called the doppler effect so when something is coming towards you and it's emitting waves those waves will be compressed and the frequency will be higher mm. when that object is moving away from you it's emitting waves the waves will be stretched out and the frequency will be lower the same thing also applies to light light waves so when an object is coming towards you the frequencies the wavelengths of the light that are coming towards you are squashed together they are shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum so that is called blue shift and when something is receding away from you the frequ- the wavelengths are stretched out and it everything appears more red so we have certain uh, uh certain frequencies like the like the uh sodium line you when you burn sodium when there is a f- when you take a snapshot of of uh, light from a galaxy you know exactly where the sodium line is going to be because we know the frequency we can test it in the lab and various other elements also they have certain characteristic signature frequencies but when you look for it in the in a far away galaxy you will see that the sodium line is shifted towards the red side and depending on how much it is shifted you know how fast it is receding away from us so for every galaxy that you see which is far away you see that every galaxy is red shifted which means they all the galaxies are moving away from us and the further a galaxy is away from us the more red shifted it is which means that the acceleration is expanding the further away it is the more the faster it is moving away from you mm. so we know the universe is expanding all far away galaxies are moving further and further away from us and that acceleration uh, that, that expansion is accelerating only the andromeda galaxy is coming towards us is going to collide with us with our galaxy in about two and a half billion years because it's too close to us that's why the gravitation uh, attraction is overcoming the expansion of the universe does it matter that it will collide with our no. galaxy because there's that much space for all the stars to find their own space yes so what is going to actually happen is not a collision but a merger merger the mm-hmm. galaxy is mostly empty space so mm-hmm. the stars are just going to pass through in the empty spaces there's going to be no collision as far as it's it's extremely unlikely that there will be an actual collision between anything mm. so eventually there will be a gravitational dance which will last a few billion years and then you will have the formation of a new super galaxy milkomeda or whatever you want to call it <laughs> that's, gonna, that's what, what's going to happen wow so we know that the galaxies are getting further and further away from us so we know at what speed the universe is expanding if you ex- extrapolate that back in time you know that the universe if you go back in time it must be it must have been smaller mm. and if you calculate this properly it works out to be about about 13.8 billion years mm. subscribe to trs clips to keep up with the highlights of the ranvi show lots of playlists curated just for you